Hi, I'm Larry Dignam from Constellation Insights, and we're here with Sunitha Ray. She's a field operations CTO with Shopify and a board member of a UK company called Finboot. Hi, Sunitha, how are you doing? I'm great. Hi, Larry. Great to meet you today. Thanks you for too. having me. Uh, so I guess let's start out with the topic du jour about genera generative AI. How are you looking at it in terms of 2025 and, and sort of positioning and what do you think we can expect? Great question. And maybe I'll just lead with a little bit of an intro so you know where, where I come from in AI. I, I My background is in software engineering and supply chain and sustainability and data science. I My most recent gig before Shopify was I was a VP of IT at Shark Ninja, where I led AI and LLMs, the whole use cases, you know, and, and all the all the fun stuff. I just wanted to differentiate between Gen AI and Enterprise AI at this point because Enterprise AI is, you know, optimizations, it's, you know, figuring out solutions to problems. And it can actually include both, you know, classified, unclassified data, unstructured, structured data, and all kinds of great stuff. So for instance, I, I, I did a, a great program project on AI where we, we designed the whole supply chain network, figured out where the optimal manufacturing plant location should be, where should the distribution cent centers be based on customer service levels that we wanted to meet. Now, Gen AI is about, about getting you know access to all the data around the world and then creating something net new. So that's the basic difference. And while it's got a lot of use cases in marketing and images and videos and all the fun, glitzy, sexy stuff, I still feel like as as to where it goes for you know use cases and ROIs for corporate use cases, I I feel like it's still got a long way to go. And part of the reason is that we need to have a lot of data to make the machine learning very effective. And I think data strategy is one of the first things companies should embark on before you know when investing in AI. So do you think, despite all the Gen AI hype, that enterprises would be way better off if they were focused on the regular old AI and optimizations and you know, sort of optimizing core processes and that kind of thing? Uh yes and no. I feel like you know, enterprise AI has is yet to be leveraged more effectively. A lot of companies are now realizing that instead of doing, you know, Excel sheets and, and calculations, AI and Python programming is a great way to reach the end result very fast and more accurate results. Gen AI still has some great use cases. So for instance, with consumer goods companies, which are manufacturing products, right? Say for instance, sneakers. If you want to make your sneakers appeal to say golfers or to sailors, or to you know people who are running track now having those images generated where you can showcase the each of those sneakers for those you know different environments is going to be very powerful right so today i'm with a company called shopify which is you know is, is one of the largest companies in e-commerce platform as a service and we are a big believers in gen ai just in terms of imagery product information and appealing and personalization to customers right in digital commerce so while there are use cases for it i just feel like the, the the amount that's being invested is sort of disproportionate to the returns that's that companies will see in the at least in the next year or two is that because they're i guess all the low-hanging fruits kind of been plucked like if you look at something like marketing you know you can you can speed up the content supply chain pretty well uh, you know something like shock of shopify i forget what it's called but they sort of have this magic button thing where you know a, a customer can basically personalize offers and all this other stuff you know kind of on the fly um you know but are the next use cases for gen ai going to be a lot harder to pull off you know Larry, i think you might you might be going down the right path there that's a very interesting question while customers can personalize they can play around but is it going to really move the needle on you know customer value realization or customer, you know, lifetime, you know, value acquisition, customer acquisition cost. So unless we see some metrics and measurements on clear ROI, I'm I'm not sure companies are going to continue to invest. And my worry is that I feel like there's a lot of benefits and there's going to be a huge wave of benefits coming in. And if companies are not seeing that at the get go, they might just start pulling back the funding, which would not be very good for the technology industry overall. Do you think they'll pull back funding just because, you know, 
every every software platform an enterprise has now has some sort of co-pilot or you know agentic ai you know they they're they're all it's all so much of this stuff is built in that you know it's it's a crowded room when it comes to co-pilots and assistants and things at this point will that cause people to pull back or there are a couple of reasons why you know i i'm, I'm not being like a you know negative nelly here but there has been a lot of investment and in, i don't have the exact numbers with pilari but there's been a huge amount of investment just in computing power we've seen nvidia you know the stock right. hitting the roof we've seen data centers which are becoming you know the next hot spot for growth and again we saw what happened with you know the dot com boom in the initial years where there was just so much investment blockchain went down the same route so much of hype you know before we started to see the results um and i feel like there's just so much investment and we have we are not kind of quantifying the benefits yet we are not able to measure it ultimately the c suite will be looking at the bottom line they look at the top line is it going to really help the top line is it going to help the bottom line unless we have some clear metrics that shows that it does you know i feel like people are going to start becoming skeptical we shouldn't just allow that to happen right so so now you're at shopify which is taking you know ai and basically building it into their product uh, not that long ago you were shark ninja where you were on the buy side of that equation uh how are things different in terms of how you think about it as an IT leader I'm very excited to be on the sell side especially with Shopify where it is one of the industry leading platforms and AI is a big part of our strategy the big difference between the buy side and sell side is buy side is always about managing constraints managing resources right sometimes you may not always make the best decisions you might compromise on some decisions just because you don't have the budget you have to you know get a few people on board you may not have the right resources you you probably don't have a head count right in the in the sell side you don't have those constraints because companies are always trying to make their product superior they want to make sure that that there's a total there's a better total cost of ownership to our customers right a shopify ceo you know quote very famously said toby Lu, uh, toby that technology transformations are a factor of the technology digital transformations are a factor of the technology decisions you make in the past right everything sort of culminates into how successful your digital transformations can be so if you if you are offering the best technology to your customers and your customers are able to leverage those technologies and implement them which i have i have been and done on the buy side it's the it's about creating that magic together so i'm very happy to be working uh, with shopify on the sell side again working with customers trying to make them successful and eventually making sure that they get their value realization right it's all about expected value minus realized value so as long as those two if you know the stew that that mathematical formula is stuck to the cu customers can be successful if our customers are successful we can be successful so with ai you know there's kind of a debate that was started at you know dreamforce and and salesforce ceo mark benioff where he was talking about enterprises doing a lot of diy ai projects and how it kind of leads you down a road that doesn't quite work yet most enterprises to date with their AI projects seem to be going the DIY route, probably because they were early movers. Um, how do you see that shaking out over time? When I when I started the whole AI, uh, you know, use case and workshop generation, and we started it off in Shark Ninja, there were very few consulting companies which were in the space. um uh, right there were just not a lot of consulting companies that had the practice to you know work with clients curate use cases you know have these sessions workshops where we come up with these use like for 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 shark ninja we came up with 100 use cases right there are very few companies that actually have it as a practice so i feel like that's probably the one thing that might be changing very rapidly as companies are starting to you know reskill restaff you know come up with frameworks to you know expand and penetrate AI and use you know AI formulation facilitation and generation and implementation workshops and this whole service we might see a little bit of that yeah it does seem like over the last year the you know the the use case playbook seem to be 
you know, pre laid out pretty well at this point in terms of where, you know, the value is. I, I was at an AWS Gen AI summit, not that, well, for analysts, not that long ago. And, you know, the, the keynote, they, they, I mean, they had a whole, you know, a whole slide of like use cases by category. So, so it does seem like the menu's been broken out a decent bit. Yeah. And it does seem like vendors are baking more, you know, AI into their platforms and, and software as a service. So I, so I guess as an IT leader, how do you decide what to build versus buy at this point? If you were starting just now, right? If you started a year ago, well, you were probably doing the DIY thing. If you're starting fresh now, say you spent all of 2024 on your data strategy, how do you look at, you know, the buy versus build debate? For AI? Yeah, if you were just starting like from scratch today. Right. So what I would do today is have an equal representation of all the business functions in your AI discussion, right? Which did not happen maybe a year ago. A year ago, it was about, you know, the sell, it was about revenue growth, top line. It wasn't so much about optimization. It wasn't so much about bottom line or structuring your fulfillment strategy or things like that. So I guess what I would what I would do differently today is really start off with, hey, do we have, you know, have a readiness workshop rather than just jumping into AI? Are we ready today as an organization to invest, to, to create value from AI, right? Most companies, I, I guess, would probably say no, but that doesn't mean you don't start it. You don't have to be perfect before you start anything. You can always, you know, progress as you go and start wetting your feet. Um, so what I would do today is, you know, have parallel tracks, you know, in data strategy. You don't need, you know, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You start off with your data strategy, look at areas which have somewhat more mature data. Say, for instance, order management, order orchestration. If your order management is in a very good mature state, take that as a use case and start building up more data, you know, layer it on rather than, you know, be an all or, all or nothing kind of a company and take, you know, maybe equal use cases in top line growth and equal use cases in, you know, bottom line and, you know, customer satisfaction and all of those metrics. And again, have clear metrics where you want to go and baseline everything, right? You have to start off with a baseline. Okay, here we are before we invested in AI and let's start tracking progress month on month or quarter on quarter, week on week, if, if necessary. And then have workshops on use cases, prioritize the use cases. One of my favorite ways of prioritization is the effort versus impact matrix, right? Mm -hmm. How much effort do you put in and how much impact are you going to get? If you're going to put in minimal effort, but you're, it's going to be high impact, that's going to be a clear winner, right? So take those cases and that's really important for executives and organizations to convince senior management, convince, you know, the market, the consumers, customers, partners that, hey, you know, we are doing the right thing. Here is the value that we've generated. And here's what we are doing to offset all those carbon emissions, right? I have to mention this when we talk about AI, there's just so much of, you know, carbon emissions and, you know, uh, GHGs that we release in the atmosphere. I guess we need to have a compliment, comprehensive strategy of how we are going to manage all of that stuff. Be a responsible corporate citizen and be responsible when you're using AI. Right. Okay. Uh, is there anything I didn't ask that I should have? Things to think about? No, I think you were just a great conversation. I guess maybe what, what, what would be in the future? What's the future hold for Gen AI? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, your guess is as good as mine, but let's hear really? yours. <laughs> I'm very I'm very optimistic and I'm very excited about this technology. I just want to make sure that companies have the necessary guardrails to make sure it doesn't fail. And they have the guardrails to make sure that employees are using it responsibly. I also feel that companies need to start training and reskilling their employees. But in the next two or three years, I see... AI as being a total game changer for most organizations, if it's done right. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's the big question is sort of just setting it up so it can proceed going forward. How fast do you think re, uh, employees can be reskilled? Um, you know, the integrators, you know, they, they throw around their big numbers, whether, you know, we, we train 440,000 people on AI certificates or badges or, or whatever they got going on. You know, your average enterprise, how how fast do you think you can reskill people? 
That's a great question. Um, most people don't need to know Python programming anymore. I'm pretty old school. I love Python. But these days you you have so many, like you have GPTs, you have Copilot. You don't need to know any coding to use you know, to actually generate, not, not just for Gen AI, even for enterprise, enterprise AI, you, you hardly need to code anymore. So I guess in terms of technical reskilling, it can be pretty fast for most business users. Prompt engineering is something that's most companies are getting into these days. I would say roughly about six to nine months, and it's absolutely imperative to train your employees. So it's just, you know, ultimately, when you want to use AI, you want to have AI permeating through your organization and you want to change the mindset. It's about reskilling and the more the more empowered your employees are, the better your AI journey will go. Right. And I guess along those lines, do you buy into that, you know, sort of agentic AI vision of, you know, basically working alongside of the digital worker that will take care of tasks and workflows and things like that? Right now, that's kind of the big use case, right? It's all about automation, workflows. But while that's great, I, I, I feel like in the next year or two, we should see more transformational use cases where, you know, it's like the, it's like the, uh, the video streaming of Netflix versus, you know, using the, the, the you know, those cassette, right? Or right. those DVDs. So that kind of transformation, I think, is going to happen in the next two to three years. And it's going to be very exciting to see where how it's going to change our corporate, you know, structure. All right. Good stuff. And thanks for joining us. And congrats on the BT150 spotlight. And I, we'll see you at CCE, correct? That's correct. See you there, right. Larry. Thanks. See you there. Thank you for your time.